Brilliant. So I'll make a start. Uh, good, uh, good morning, afternoon or evening to everyone, wherever you are, and uh, welcome uh, to this uh, Fortran Lang mini symposium, which will be running for the rest of the day. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the conference organizers for organizing yet another uh, fantastic Fortran con this year, uh, and for giving Fortran Lang this uh, mini symposium session, uh, which I'll now kick off with uh, this presentation, the state of Fortran uh, 2021, where I'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Fortran Lang community and its projects. So uh, my name is Lawrence Kedward. I'm a researcher uh, in the aerospace engineering department um, at the University of Bristol uh, in the UK. So I use Fortran a lot for uh, computational aerodynamics and developing the tools around that. Um, so this presentation today is uh, very much based on a paper that uh, is currently uh, undergoing revisions for submission to uh, the Computing in Science and Engineering magazine. And so I'd like to uh, extend my thanks to the co-authors listed here for uh, all their hard work on that paper and that presentation. So in this presentation, um, I'd like to kickstart our mini symposium session um, really with a, a brief explanation of, you know, why do we use Fortran? I think it's good to take a step back and um, really uh, kind of address that. Uh, and followed by a discussion on uh, some of the shortcomings that have been identified uh, in its ecosystem, um, particularly uh, in recent years. And this will uh, lead us on to uh, the history and uh, motivation for forming the Fortran Lang community uh, and starting its various projects. And finally, I'll finish with a brief introduction uh, to these Fortran Lang open source software projects, which we've already heard uh, quite a bit about uh, and we'll hear much more about uh, in the rest of this session. So first, uh, just a bit of history. Uh, Fortran uh, was developed uh, way back in the mid 1950s at IBM uh, by a team led by uh, John Backus. And here the goal was very much uh, looking to ease the burden on uh, scientists and engineers who were really the main users of uh, computers in that day um, when implementing their uh, mathematical formulas uh, computationally. And this gives rise to the name Fortran uh, for Formula Translator. Now Fortran uh, was pioneering in, pioneering in many senses, uh, not only uh, being the first high-level programming language, um, but it is widely accepted as being uh, the first optimized and cross-platform language as well. And this was uh, very much driven by uh, its popularity um, and consequent rapid adoption by uh, hardware manufacturers in their uh, compilers. And as a result of this, uh, many computation, computationally intensive uh, scientific applications and libraries uh, quickly picked up Fortran as their implementation language. Now Fortran uh, has been under continued uh, development uh, over its uh, six or so decades um, with many uh, language updates and revisions uh, where the latest standard uh, is 2018. And so this leads us um, to the first uh, part of this talk where I ask um, what makes Fortran effective uh, for high performance numerical and scientific computing in, in the current day and age. So we argue that there are kind of three broad reasons uh, to be using Fortran. The first uh, and foremost perhaps is uh, the high level of abstraction that it provides uh, while uh, also being a high performance um, language. And perhaps uh, most notably um, that sets Fortran apart from other languages is its strong array orientated style. So this means uh, multi-dimensional arrays are part of the language. Uh, and with this, we have an expressive syntax for uh, array slicings, slicing, and we can have guarantees uh, for non-aliasing of array arguments. And we also have um, elemental procedures for uh, trivially defining uh, map type operations on uh, multi-dimensional arrays. And so altogether, um, this means that uh, Fortran compilers can uh, generate really quite nicely optimized uh, machine code uh, for the array operations that we describe. And so this uh, strong support for arrays at a language level uh, is really a, a great driver for uh, the use of Fortran um, in scientific and numerical computing. 
Now, as part of its uh, high abstraction level, uh, Fortran is strongly and statically typed. And this means that we get uh, inherent protection against uh, many common uh, programming pitfalls, and we get meaningful uh, compile time errors uh, for them uh, and with no runtime penalty. Similarly, um, the high level of abstraction comes with a, a simple syntax, which is easy to learn, uh, and, and it is standardized and portable. So by way of an example, uh, simply the ability to use uh, dynamically allocated arrays without uh, worrying about pointers or the risk of memory leaks uh, provides a really uh, important source of robustness and safety uh, without any uh, added mental burden uh, on the programmer. And so that's uh, really quite nice. And finally, um, you know, as part of this abstraction, Fortran has long supported um, parallel programming. And most recent standards have added uh, the do concurrent uh, constructs, as well as uh, co arrays, teams, events, and collectives. Now, the second uh, argument for using Fortran um, are the strong guarantees of uh, stability and reliability uh, at the language level. Now, Fortran compilers must adhere to the uh, Fortran standard, which remains uh, largely backwards compatible um, with previous standards, uh, but while still uh, supporting uh, the newer modern features of the language. Now, this is uh, important uh, in not breaking the many existing applications of, and libraries that use Fortran, uh, some of which can be uh, quite large. And uh, this is important, particularly for these projects where uh, validation and verification uh, can be quite costly and time consuming. What this also means is um, that you can have confidence uh, in using a Fortran library that was uh, perhaps written a few years ago, um, but you can also have confidence uh, that the code that you write today in Fortran will compile and run uh, many years from now. And uh, the, the same cannot be said uh, of other newer languages, uh, which uh, move at a much uh, faster pace. Now, at the same time, this um, backwards compatibility uh, and code longevity does not prevent compilers from exploiting uh, modern hardware improvements, since the language itself is designed uh, mostly to sit at uh, an abstraction level uh, agnostic to the specifics of the underlying hardware, uh, which is a, a, an important um, abstraction. And finally, uh, the third reason um, for using Fortran is its uh, general maturity. And this is uh, most obvious in the number of freely available Fortran compilers uh, as listed here, uh, all of which are uh, under active development. And two of these are uh, target the LLVM um, compiler infrastructure for code generation. And hopefully you all saw um, Andre's fantastic talk yesterday on L Fortran and the exciting work that's been going on there. As I've alluded to, uh, there's also a large ecosystem of existing uh, libraries and applications written in Fortran uh, for numerical and scientific purposes. And these codes have been uh, extensively verified, uh, tested, and optimized. Finally, Fortran itself is incorporated into a number of other um, well-established standards, notably uh, those targeting parallel execution, such as MPI, OpenMP, and OpenACC. So to summarize, uh, there are really many re good reasons to be using Fortran uh, and that make it an effective tool uh, for high performance computing, notably uh, the easy to learn syntax, um, which provides a high level of abstraction um, while maintaining a very high performance. Uh, the inherent stability and code longevity that the language provides, um, which supports a burgeoning ecosystem of uh, libraries and applications, as well as the maturity of the language, um, which is supported by a wide variety of, of um, high quality compilers. So, and so now in this second part of the talk, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the history of uh, Fortran Lang, um, how it came about and um, some of its um, goals and projects. So I'll start with um, an acknowledgement really that um, the ecosystem and tooling around Fortran um, really has stagnated in a certain sense uh, when you compare that uh, to those of um, modern programming languages. Um, first of all, uh, Fortran has 
no standard library. So despite having uh, many uh, intrinsic functions, uh, achieving general purpose uh, programming tasks uh, in Fortran, such as string handling and uh, sorting algorithms, etc., cetera, um, is still quite difficult. Um, you either have to re-implement it yourself or find uh, an existing implementation. And so there's a lot of uh, duplicate effort as a result. And uh, this, is, this is not uh, particularly robust. Similarly, uh, building and distributing uh, Fortran software is difficult. Uh, this provides quite a high barrier to new users uh, using the language, and this is uh, definitely something I see at university. And worse still, it discourages uh, the reuse of software just because it takes that little bit more extra effort to incorporate uh, third-party libraries into your own uh, software project. Now, Fortran has no uh, community-maintained compiler, which makes it easy to um, uh, prototype new features and uh, develop new tooling off of the back of it. And indeed, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, motivating points uh, for the L Fortran compiler, um, which hopefully you uh, saw yesterday. And finally, um, Fortran has not really had a prominent uh, dedicated website um, for uh, kind of drawing in new users and to learn about Fortran. Uh, as well as existing users to uh, learn about uh, the ongoing uh, development of the language. Now, a lot of these um, shortcomings um, were uh, identified by uh, Jacob Williams and discussed on Twitter um, with Andre and Sertek back in the August of 2019. Um, here with the uh, kind of identifying a, a, a desire to really uh, improve this uh, to, to a certain extent. Now, a couple of months later, um, Andre started the uh, J3 Fortran, Fortran Proposals Repository uh, with the goal to um, get feedback and suggestions directly from the community uh, and to feed into the standards uh, committee. So the workflow on this repository is uh, quite straightforward. Um, anyone can uh, open a new issue in this repository and propose uh, some kind of addition or modification to the uh, Fortran standard. And anyone can then join in and discuss uh, this proposal and uh, perhaps um, formalize it uh, in, in some way. And if the community um, uh, you know, reaches some kind of consensus, uh, then, then uh, the community can then um, collaboratively and publicly draft a formal proposal on the GitHub repository um, for feeding into the standards committee. So when this uh, repository was started, um, there was really quite a flurry of activity. Uh, lots of people getting involved, uh, which is quite exciting um, to see all of the ideas there and to really see that there is this uh, desire within the community to uh, continue to develop the Fortran language. And so, um, so far, uh, we have 90 contributors uh, to the discussions on that repository. Um, and eight uh, formal uh, proposals have been drafted through it. Now, in November of 2019, it became uh, clear that a lot of the proposals within this repository uh, were for more intrinsic uh, functions uh, for the language, and specifically uh, intrinsic functions with a wider scope um, uh, for doing these general purpose programming tasks that I mentioned, such as uh, string handling, uh, file system access, sorting algorithms, and, and various mathematical functions. And so uh, Milan proposed to start a separate uh, standard library project in response to these requests. Um, and indeed, in uh, December of, of that year, uh, the STD lib repository was started uh, under the uh, Fortran Lang namespace uh, on GitHub. Now, around the same time, a couple of proposals on, the, uh, on this proposals repository were uh, exploring the idea of having uh, or forming some kind of uh, dedicated Fortran ecosystem uh, with uh, some kind of package manager and build system. And as I've alluded to, the motivation and aims here is really to uh, improve the ease of use for uh, new users as well as existing users to uh, compile um, complex Fortran projects. And also to really remove the barrier um, in depending on uh, multiple Fortran libraries as dependencies in, in your own projects. Uh, and all of this really to uh, kind of create some kind of inter interoperable uh, ecosystem of uh, high quality Fortran libraries. Uh, and ideally um, to kind of support all common compilers with uh, some kind of common front end uh, build system 
as is often um, uh, the case that we see with um, uh, modern languages uh, today. And so uh, in January of uh, 2020, the uh, Fortran Package Manager or FPM uh, project was started uh, under the Fortran Lang namespace on GitHub. Uh, a few months later, uh, Milan then launched uh, FortranLang.org as a new uh, central website for Fortran. And a month later, we also applied for a free discourse instance um, for the Fortran Lang organization. So FortranLang.org uh, is intended to be a central uh, community maintained website for Fortran. And uh, it is open source uh, on GitHub and you can um, go to our Fortran Lang GitHub page and check it out. Um, and it's intended that uh, anyone can kind of uh, suggest or contribute uh, to the content of this website. And I do encourage you to um, get involved if you have any ideas or suggestions uh, for that. So the website uh, currently has a list of uh, Fortran compilers uh, with some information about them. We have a, a number of uh, tutorials for getting started with Fortran and also uh, lists of learning resources as well. And we also publish a monthly newsletter uh, detailing all of our activity um, in Fortran Lang, as well as uh, activity in, in the wider Fortran community. We also have a so-called package index where we um, have kind of uh, listed all of the various Fortran libraries and programs that we're aware of, uh, categorized by domain area. And so this is really quite nice for um, seeing what's out there and seeing what uh, prior art has, has gone before. And so uh, FortranLang.org is uh, within the top one or two uh, on most search engines when you now search for Fortran, uh, which is great. Our Fortran Lang uh, discourse is uh, intended to be a kind of modern and, and friendly forum. So we, we're welcoming to all abilities, both novices and experts. Uh, and we support uh, you know, modern markdown formatting, uh, which is uh, particularly useful for um, formatting our Fortran code. Um, and so we have about uh, 450 registered users uh, now reaching around 100,000 page views per month, um, which is quite fantastic. So if you haven't checked out um, this discourse, I, I do encourage you to go check it out and share your experiences and your questions with the community. Um, it's really great to see um, lots of activity on the discourse and I certainly learn something new about Fortran um, every time I, I visit. So do check that out if you um, haven't already. And if you're interested in uh, learning a bit more about what I've just spoken about, uh, about Fortran Lang and, and some of these projects, then I do encourage you um, to check out uh, this paper that was recently submitted to ACM Fortran Forum led by Milan. And so you can see the, the preprint um, on archive at this address here. And um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, the content of this paper is uh, largely, the content of this talk, sorry, is largely based on another paper, The State of Fortran, um, which will be uh, hopefully coming in uh, computing and science engineering soon. So uh, do keep your eyes peeled for that. So in the last part of this talk, I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit more about some of these um, projects that I've mentioned and then signpost you all uh, to the, the talks for uh, the rest of the session. So as, I, as I've mentioned, um, we have our Fortran Lang uh, organization on GitHub where we currently have uh, 14 open source projects. And this includes our core projects of uh, the Fortran standard library uh, the Fortran Package Manager and uh, FortranLang.org website. And so this is a place where we can uh, publicly and collaboratively um, develop these projects and we use uh, the Git uh, version control system for that. So all of these uh, projects are open source under permissive licenses and we have um, at last count over 180 contributors to the code and discussions uh, across all of these projects. So um, do get involved. We're always looking for uh, new contributors um, on our projects. Um, now this year, uh, Fortran Lang applied uh, to the Google Summer of Code program uh, to be a mentor organization. Google Summer of, so uh, of Code is a, an international program by Google uh, to fund students for a 10 week uh, open source software project during their summer break. And earlier this year, we 
applied to be a new mentor organization, uh, we were accepted and um, we, achieved, we were awarded um, six student slots uh, for this summer, just last gone, along with um, Al Fortran. And so this is really quite fantastic uh, for a new um, organization for GSOC. And so um, over this summer, just gone, we've had six students working on uh, across these projects. We had uh, three students working uh, with Andre on El Fortran, uh, two students working uh, on the standard library and one student working on the uh, Fortran package manager. So uh, following this talk, um, we'll have three uh, quick lightning talks um, from our GSOC students who are working on El Fortran. Um, so hopefully uh, most of you caught the uh, L Fortran talk yesterday, and so we'll hear a little bit more about the work that's been going on on that uh, in detail over, over the summer, uh, followed by a, a quick discussion. So a bit more information about the uh, standard library project that I mentioned. Um, here the aim is very much to develop and to provide uh, a community-driven uh, standard library for Fortran, um, here with that wider scope of, of um, functions than is provided by the language intrinsics. So um, the SDD lib is available on Git, uh, GitHub. And I do encourage you to uh, check out the API documentation at this second address, uh, stdlib.fortranlang.org to see um, what's already in uh, the standard library. There's uh, already quite a lot in there, a lot of useful stuff, including uh, sorting algorithms and string handling. Um, so do check that out. Um, and you can also have a look at the uh, STD lib GitHub page uh, in the issues and in the uh, pull requests to see uh, what ideas have been proposed, what, um, what is in the works and um, what is, uh, what's currently going on there. Uh, and again, I do encourage you to get involved with that project uh, if you're interested. Uh, it's uh, a lot of activity going on there and um, we can use all the help we can really to um, build up this um, quite fantastic project. And so, like I said, the scope here really uh, is, is broad. It includes um, lots of useful program, uh, general purpose algorithms, uh, programming utilities, uh, as well as various uh, mathematical functions. So there's really um, a kind of uh, wide scope uh, for anyone to get involved uh, with this. So later on today, we'll uh, hear more about this, uh, the standard library and what's uh, been going on uh, from Nathaniel. And then we'll have uh, two lightning talks uh, to discuss uh, the work that's been going on uh, over the summer in the uh, GSOC projects. And then there's time for discussion on that uh, afterwards as well. And the Fortran Package Manager, again, is available on GitHub here. Um, here, the goal very much is a Fortran specific uh, build system and package manager. Again, as I said, to reduce uh, that kind of learning curve and barrier for uh, new uh, new uh, users of Fortran, as well as uh, starting new projects, um, which depend on uh, other Fortran libraries. Now, FPM is relatively young, but it's already uh, really quite capable, uh, moving very quickly. Um, and as you'd expect, it's um, it can it can scan uh, module and submodule dependencies, uh, build quite a wide variety of uh, complex project structures. It supports uh, Fortran and C source files and can perform uh, incremental and parallel builds uh, to speed things up. Um, if you have a, a, an FPM compatible library, then um, that itself can be specified as project dependency in, a, in any other um, FPM package. And in this case, um, FPM will quite nicely um, download and incorporate that dependency into your local project or for you and, and take care of all of the uh, compilation uh, for you, which is really quite nice. And so we have, um, at last count, over 170 uh, FPM compatible packages now on GitHub and GitLab, and that's uh, growing uh, every day. And so um, again, um, please do check out FPM. Um, it's a really uh, interesting project, and we're really uh, interested to get feedback on it um, in, in, in its current uh, development stage uh, and to, to really improve it. Um, so do check that out if you haven't already. And later today, we'll hear much more about um, FPM from uh, Sebastian. And then we'll hear uh, from Jakob on his summer project for uh, managing compiler flags in FPM, uh, followed by some time uh, for discussion. And so I'll just leave you here with a breakdown of uh, what's uh, to come. 
uh, in this session. And uh, thank you all very much for your time and, and for listening. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, we have one question in, um, in the Slack from, from Milan, uh, which is um, for everybody and also, uh, also for you. So what is the uh, project uh, from foreign language are you most excited about? Um, yeah, that's a great pro uh, that's a great question, actually. Um, I'm kind of torn between uh, STDlib and uh, FPM. I've, I've spent my most time uh, working with FPM, and that's probably very much where my energy and excitement comes, uh, just because it's uh, moving so quickly and um, uh, just using it really uh, makes you question, you know, why has this not been done before? Because it's, it's so nice to use. Uh, so I think I'd have to go with FPM on that. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to see what everyone else replies to that question. Um, what, what's yours, uh, Sebastian? Uh, uh, for me, FPM as well uh, is really a game changer. Uh, and it's really changed the way I, uh, I, I mean, currently writing for my own projects. Yes, I can see um, quite a lot of people are saying FPM, which is uh, quite encouraging. Um, and qu uh, quite recently, we have um, some kind of limited support for uh, using uh, the standard library from FPM, which really kind of adds to the excitement here because um, we can now pull in um, lots of common uh, string handling utilities and sorting algorithms um, into, F into FPM, which is really into our FPM projects, which is really quite exciting. Well, there's another question uh, in the Slack, uh, which is about uh, uh, what the difficulty to distribute Fortran projects. Um, um, maybe read this question has been uh, happening on a large scale since uh, 1960s. Uh, discussion groups, websites have been going strong uh, since 1990, and specialists were discussing Fortran since 1970s or so. Um, I think, um, yes, um, it's possible to distribute uh, Fortran projects, but um, there's, of course, difficulty. Uh, I think there's, uh, of course, always this difficulty of uh, ha uh, having different Fortran compilers we want to support. Yeah, that is a, a fair point. And, um, for, for obvious reasons, I wasn't around in the 1960s and I wasn't programming in the 1990s, um, so I, I can't comment directly on that, but it is a fair point. Um, obviously, you can you can distribute Fortran programs. Um, what I would argue is that um, the uh, kind of effort involved in locating um, and kind of incorporating those uh, libraries into an existing um, project, uh, there is a barrier there uh, to getting everything working. Uh, as compared to um, the workflow that we see in um, many modern languages. And really that is uh, very much what FPM targets. And so anyone who's used FPM will know that uh, incorporating code into their project is uh, quite simple. You add a, sim a, a single line to your manifest and FPM um, does everything for you. And so it's really a case of uh, not whether it's possible, but uh, how much effort is involved uh, and at the robustness of the process. There's another question uh, in the chat about the uh, community maintained compiler. Um, and um, well, um, what the status of G4 from in this context? Yeah, that's also a fair question. Thank you, Marshall. Um, I think uh, to be specific, uh, it sh I should, I think I said um, there's no um, community maintained compiler that is very easy to. Uh, get started in as a contributor and start playing around and which welcomes uh, prototyping and uh, using the compiler itself as a library. And as I understand it, this is very much the intention for L Fortran. Um, there's lots of exciting proposals for using L Fortran, uh, extending it uh, to prototype new features, um, but also using the underlying technology uh, to build other tools um, such as formatting 
uh, and uh, other things like that. And so, yeah, I, I should qualify that as saying um, we do have G Fortran, um, but I would argue that it's not so easy to get started as a contributor to G Fortran and certainly not uh, to use it um, for some of these more um, kind of uh, um, what, uh, prototyping ideas um, in that sense. 